most colonies have disappeared entirely. But not all threatened Philippine species are animals. Orlin Rojas works with Cebu cinnamon trees, which are unique to Cebu Island. Actually, meron ding mga uh, cinnamon na endemic to other uh, areas in the Philippines. Like Mindanao, meron silang endemic din sa kanila. Pero yung cinnamon, kasi as you see sa kuana to, sa, sa Cebu, kanang gamay na lang kayo ang atong lasang. It's, uh, the biggest is 700 hectares. And then out of the uh, 700 hectares, ang cinnamon population natin, for the two, for the whole island of Cebu is just 760 763 ba to 763 individuals ang um, this is the global population because of the studies that had been conducted on the Cebu cinnamon it was found out that this is the most threatened tree in the whole world from cockatoos the fruit bats the cinnamon trees philippine species are presently threatened with extinction in alarming numbers there is one major underlying reason why. You have a very high population pressure here. You have a lot of people survi surviving on a relatively small area, uh, which puts a lot of pressure on your natural resources. That's why a lot of wildlife is critically endangered. The most direct and serious result of human pressure on Philippine natural resources is the destruction of habitat and in terrestrial ecosystems. This largely equates to deforestation. Ang mga um, uri ng halaman at hayop na ito ay under heavy threat. Some, uh, dahil uh, kadalasan sa paggamit ng tao, um, ang ating pagpuputol ng ating kagubatan. Kung ikukumpara natin yung kagubatan natin 100 years ago, ang natitira na lang nating gubat ay less than 10% nung original na, na, nung, na kagubatan na meron tayo noong 1900. In fact, two-thirds of the Philippines' forests have been cleared in just the last 50 years. It is the nation with the most severe and rapid deforestation on Earth. Whilst much of the Philippines' denudation is the result of large-scale commercial logging, it's another form of land clearing that's most rampant today. I think the primary threat na nai-encounter nila is habitat destruction, which is brought about by kaingin or the slash and burn for agriculture purposes and as well as the conversion of forests into agricultural fields. Kaingin is practiced by subsistence farmers and involves the clearing of natural forests to make way for crops. It is currently whittling down the country's remaining rainforest, but the destruction of wildlife habitat encompasses more than deforestation. It also includes the destruction of coastal and marine habitats. The marine system is under attack from, from overfishing, from dynamiting, destruction of the mangroves and the corals. Whatever we can save now, we have to save. Malaking epekto yung uh, illegal fishing dahil uh, lumalayo na yung mga isda. Naghihirap na rin kami ng pang, uh, panghuhuli. Uh, epekto ng mga illegal fishing. Uh, ginagamit yung sari-sari, may dynamite, sodium. Maraming klase na ginagamit puro tungkol sa mga illegal. Yung lahat ng mga pamamaraan nila sa illegal, ginagamit nila dito. Siltation is another serious threat to Philippine marine life. Rivers and streams flowing through deforested areas wash large quantities of sediment downstream and into the ocean. Here, it's mother's coral reefs, causing their death over vast areas. In addition to suffering from the loss or damage of their habitats, many wild Philippine animals are threatened by the slingshots, traps, and guns of Filipinos. Hunting wildlife is common practice here and often learned at an early age. Ang panahon, kanang bata pa ko, ang mata na ko kahayag, kanagong manguha og mga hayop, daghan gina diri ma'am, niya ang ginahimo nilang pagkain, parang pagkaon, tanudan, 
kay layo man ang dagat na parang managat sila. Then usa gani kung kuan na ko imbol ba na ma'am kay akong papa usa mag hunters pud sa una ang ang ilang gi hinakuha kanang mga unggoy, mga manok ihalas ug ubang mga dagkong langgam nya kay ako kay bata pa man di man ko kahimog pangnguha og mga kuan manguha lang sa guan ang mga dagmay nga mga mananap parehas sa mga siyama o guban pang mga langgam nga gagmay lang ya, akong, gina, among, akong ginagamit sa una ka, uban ang mga kabataan po kauban ako itong kapulot para pa, papilit sa mga langgam ya, anak na mo buhata sa tunggo nang may tubig nga tunggo bitaw niya amo lang ibutang sa kilid ang kapulot dahil mo pilit rana bisan anong klase bisan unsang klase sa mga langgam ma kuha na mo nagsimula kami sa sa ibon nung bago lang natututong maghunting ibon ma, ma maamo kasi ang ibon ng araw dito tapos ay eh, natuto kami ng unggoy unggoy naman ang binabaril namin dala na yung mga bisan bayawak sa kayang leagan hangga sa nung panahon na nagsasasama ang kuha na, na, na wala kami ng hanap buhay walang niyog kaya ginawa rin namin pantay gutom yung panghuli ng baboy at usa kasi yun ang nabibinta dito ang karne Another significant threat to the populations of wild Philippine animals and plants is their overcollection for display for the pet trade and for the illegal wildlife trade. Right now, it's one of the major threats. I'll take Bohol as an example. If you go to the hotels in, in Panglao Island, you'll find animals in cages that shouldn't be there. They're not found on the island of Panglao. They're taken out of the forest in Bilar, as you visited. So what's happening is it's a free-for-all. And the enforcement of the laws, which says you cannot collect wild animals, is not being very well implemented. So what's happening is you're decimating the population. It's true that the unsustainable harvesting of wildlife species has been extensive both before and after the introduction of laws against this practice. Carlito Pizarras talks about his past days as a poacher. Itong atay mga year 70s, ang baligya na mo sa Osa Katarser, one lang, 150. Pisos, ang nag-order na mo, pariner. So, kinahanglan, mak, uh, kada simana, maka-supply mo niya mga 100. Sige pa, wak pa iban ang pag-export sa mga stop animals kita eh. Muna yung mong gihimo. Among ibaligya, ang dayon niya, ang uban para sa i-export kita na mo ang rustan, manhin na mo doon ay magkumpra. So, daghan kayo. Kinahanglan nga maka sa usaka klase nga birds, uh, kung ano, makasupply may mga 50 kabuok kada klase. Uh, bisan ang mga uban dili kay sa birds, ano ang mga wildlife maniya din sa buhol. Bisan gani ang pawikan. Oh, nakastop ko pawikan nga dako kayo. Today, illegal wildlife trade is still big business. Romel Cruz is responsible for assisting local authorities to enforce wildlife trade laws in the south of Palawan. The first confiscation we have was in October 2006, where we were able to reach 107 hill mines, two sea eagles and one Philippine cockatoo that we had in a house that was already worked in the armed forces. So, ganun ka katindi yung wildlife trading. Uh, kung ikukumpara nga namin doon sa mga confiscations eh, napapag-